And here we go with a lesson that takes what we did last class and applies it to equation rules or properties, okay? So the only thing that's going to be different this time is what's in between the left side and the right side. And this time it's a big greater than symbol, okay? But we treat these the same way. There's just one big difference. If you multiply or divide by a negative, because that sign has other friends, we could possibly have to switch that sign. So greater than would switch the less than, greater than or equal to would switch the less than or equal to, and then vice versa for both of those situations. But let's get to the first step. First step in solving equations is to undo the last thing in the order of operations. So in this case, the last thing I would have done is subtract 7. So the first thing I'm going to do is add 7 to both sides using the property of equality. Oh yes, those properties are not going to go away. Adding 7 does not change the sign. It's only when you multiply or divide. So that wasn't even a worry. Just make sure you're not making that mistake of bringing down an equal sign. Classic thing, because we're so used to solving equations that I see students do. Next up is to undo the multiplication. So let's divide by 2 on both sides. And x would be something in 10. Now the number I divided by was a positive. So therefore, this would stay greater than. Now the directions do ask me to graph this, so I'm just going to do a real quick sketch. So I'll put a line down, and the number that we solved for was 10, so I'm going to put that in the middle. I'm going to go 2 higher on the right, 2 lower on the left. Let's not forget what type of circles we have. We have the choice between an open circle and a filled in circle. When it's just greater than, it's a open circle. Let me change my color for the graphing of this. So 10 is not included. 10 is not greater than 10. 10 is equal to 10, but we don't have that sign. So I got to find numbers greater than 10. Is 9 greater than 10? No. Is 8 greater than 10? No. But 11, 12? Yes. So all of these numbers get the shading, and you'd have to put this uh, arrow on it to make sure you show that it's going on forever and ever. Now this is a fine way to write an inequality, but there is a fancier way, and that doesn't have the inequality symbol at all, okay? Since 10 is the smallest number, I put that one on the left, and this is um, approaching infinity, right? Because it's going to keep getting larger and never, never end. So we could actually write this as 10 comma infinity. Remember, f infinity is a concept, it's not an actual number, so I use a parenthesis, 10 was just greater than 10, so not a bracket, just a parenthesis, and this is your interval notation, your IN, all right, if you want an acronym for that. Okay, first one in the books, let's keep going here. Second one involves fractions. You got to get used to seeing them, folks. They're going to happen. Now, one way you could solve this would be to change these to decimals. So you could totally go over here and do 1 half as 0.5 and minus 3 less than or equal to 75 cents, 3 quarters or 75 cents. And then we talked about strategies about how we could change those into regular old numbers, whole numbers, by multiplying. So because it's 75 hundredths, you might want to multiply this by 100 to make this 50, because that decimal is going to shift twice, and then 300x still less than or equal to, and this would be 75, and you'd be totally fine with solving it that way. I'm not going to, though, because I'm going to solve it with the fractions, because, hey, you know, maybe we didn't have that option. I mean, you always have that option, unless it was a um, never-ending, never-repeating kind of fraction, uh, an irrational number, that is. So in the first thing uh, that I'd like to do is the same thing I would treat any equation. I'm going to start by adding or subtracting, one half, the number without the variable. So that's going to leave us with negative 3x less than or equal to, and now I've got 3 fourths minus 1 half. And your calculator could totally do this, but I'm just going to show you how we can make like denominators. 1 half is the same as 2 out of 4, and now that I have a common denominator, I can subtract the numerators, the 3 minus the 2, which would be 1 fourth. Okay? So 3 minus 2, you leave the denominator the same, and now I'm left with this um, last step in which I'm going to divide by negative 3. And I'm going to divide by negative 3. So that's going to leave me with x. And because I divided by a negative, guess what? This becomes 
less than or sorry greater than or equal to it was once less than or equal to so when it divided by a negative it becomes greater than or equal to uh, one one fourth divided by negative three put it in your calculator and it comes out with negative one twelfth okay now we do want to graph this on a number line so what do we do well Let's think about where negative 1 12th is. It's not even a whole thing. So if I had 0 here, 1 and 2, and then I put negative 1 and negative 2, uh, 1 12th would be somewhere between 0 and 1 and actually pretty close to 0. Now, because it is greater than or equal to, I fill the circle in. Okay, so I would fill it in right here, and then I want to say that it's greater than that number, so I would shade it to the right. All right, and if I was doing this as a compound inequality, because I was getting greater, I would consider this the smallest number, negative 1 over 12, and it approaching positive infinity, which here would be a parenthesis, because it's not a number it could be equal to, but because it's greater than or equal to at this end, this number does uh, work it is included in the answer so it gets the bracket remember brackets kind of have that equal sign look to them and that's how you can remember okay let's go on to the next one which would be a good old-fashioned variable on both sides so hopefully after our equation work you became experts at these now when I'm looking at this and faced with this problem first thing I'd maybe want to do is think about distributing uh, so I'm going to multiply by 2 and make this 6x minus 10. No reason to change the sign. Less than or equal to 2x plus 6. Okay. Now we got these variables on both sides and I can't subtract 10 and I can't add 6. So why don't I bring those variables together? And in this case, I just do the opposite. Meaning if this was a positive 2, I would subtract 2x on both sides. I got to find the like terms because only like terms go together. Subtracting does not change the sign, and you'd be left with less than or equal to 6. We could then go ahead and add 10, undo subtraction for 4x less than or equal to 16. Divide by 4, a positive 4, and x something 4, well, fill in the blank here, would stay the same and less than or equal to. Let's go ahead and put this on a number line. So, real quick sketch. Whole number this time, we like that, 4, 5, 6, getting larger, 3, 2, getting smaller, opened or closed at 4, this time the answer is included, so let's fill that number in, so 4 is less than or equal to 4, the less than side of this makes this true, 3, is it less than 4, yes, 2, is it less than 4, yes, so sh shade to the side that makes these true, and there you have it, folks, okay? But we could also write this as a interval, okay? So the smallest number in this case is approaching infinity, right? We don't even know what the smallest number is because it's going to be somewhere way down the line. But the biggest number was 4, so that goes on the right. Because this was an equal to situation, I'm going to make a bracket, all right? So there's the bracket that looks like an equal sign, and then I just connect it. And then the infinity sign never gets uh, a bracket because it's not a number that it could be equal to. Uh, one more, and we're going to change the problem up. So this is on your notes. We're going to get rid of that one, okay? And we're going to do it with a compound inequality. So uh, instead of that, please replace it with 14 less than 2x and, okay, instead of or, we're going to use and, 17 greater than or equal to x plus 3. Okay, so now let's solve these two inequalities. They are combined with that word and, and uh, let's see what we end up with once it's simplified. So I'm going to divide by 2 here, divide by 2, negative 7, still less than x, okay? Now I don't really like when the variable is on the right, I'd rather have it on the left. So let's go ahead and do the reverse and do x greater than negative 7. Okay, that makes sense to me. Bigger than a negative 7. This and can be brought down the whole time. And over on the other side, let's go finish this one up. This one should be pretty straightforward. All I want to do is subtract 3 on both sides. Okay, so that's going to give us 14, still less than or equal to, and then just x. Again, I'm not really satisfied with having the variable on that side. So instead, I'm going to write this as x 
14. So when I switch the number in the variable, guess what happens to greater than? It gets switched to less than or equal to, okay? So now I've got two things that make sense to me. X is less than negative, sorry, X is greater than negative 7 and less than or equal to 14. So if I was to graph this, okay, I'd want to put, you know, negative 7 here, you know, maybe negative 8, 0 in the middle, uh, 14 way down here, maybe negative 15 to show that it can go that way. And I'd want to put a closed circle at 14 because it's equal to it, but an open circle at negative 7. And if it was greater than this and less than this, you got it. This and is going to make these shade the middle because our answers are somewhere between here where the numbers have to be both, have to be less than excuse me, greater than negative 7 and less than or equal to 14. Now let's go ahead and write this as a compound inequality, and I'm going to teach you a little bit of a shortcut, okay? So we're going to use just one variable, so just x. And on either side of that x, when you write this from least to greatest, will be less than symbols, okay? Guarantee you, if you put the smaller number on the left, the greater number on the right, you'll be good. So smaller number, negative 7, greater number, 14. Now, they will be less than, but sometimes they're equal to. In the case of the 14, this has an equal to sign under it, so that would be less than or equal to. And remember, this came from this one right here, okay, which is right here, and this inequality right here. They basically splice them together to make one inequality and just use this x that they had in common. Well, I hope you would enjoyed this lesson on solving inequalities, and we'll see you on the flip side.